Car tester Sasha Knapp describes Geely Automobiles' acquisition of the Volvo brand from Ford in 2010 as a last-minute rescue. At first, the new ownership constellation did not seem to bode well. But after three years, the Chinese car and motorcycle maker's nearly 10 billion euro investment program is starting to produce results, like the latest XC90. The updated model introduces a new design vocabulary. Our car tester, Tanju Gensch, inspects the Swedish car maker's new flagship inside and out. In Norse mythology, Thor is the god of thunder, overflowing with masculinity and strength, he says. The hammer and those qualities are reflected in the new XC90. Like here, in the headlights, for instance. He wants to look at what the Swedish brand has to offer in its new design. The distinctive new grille and T-shaped LED daytime running lights give the SUV a confident air, a face that in future is to grace all of Volvo's models. The elegant and luxurious package of extras is called the Inscription. Even with the changes great and small, from the back the XC90 is unmistakably a Volvo. Tanju notices quite a few changes in the model's interior. There's a digital instrument cluster and a 22.8-inch head-up touchscreen display embedded in Volvo's trademark center console. All the functions can be controlled via this display. Volvo appears to have borrowed a few ideas from electric car manufacturer Tesla Motors. The tablet-style display gives easy access to all the car's options and settings. Along the bottom of the center console is a row of seven buttons and a dial. The sound system has also been thoroughly reworked. Tanju jokes that if you've ever wanted to experience a concert hall in Gothenburg, now you can just do it in an XC90. 19 Bowers and Wilkins speakers are installed, and the concert hall option activates them all. A glance at the specs reveals that, even after downsizing from a six to a four-cylinder engine, the Volvo XC90 still got plenty of power. The T6 we tested sends 235 kilowatts to its all-wheel drive, propelling the vehicle's two tons from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in six and a half seconds. Technology tester Sasha Knapp checked out the safety features. He says the new XC90 has made some advances in terms of safety. It's got, for instance, a new driver's assist that senses if the car runs off the road. This isn't a lane departure warning. It actually works passively. It activates an electronic belt tightener that keeps the seatbelt firmly tightened during an accident, he says. Many other systems use a pressurized gas chamber. Once it's empty, the tension on the seatbelt lets up very rapidly, but this electronic belt tightener keeps the tension up the entire time the vehicle is in motion. Runoff road protection is standard on the new XC90. The moment the sensors detect the car leaving the asphalt, the front seat belts are tightened electronically as far as they'll go and kept that way until the vehicle comes to a standstill. Sasha says he's also had the opportunity to drive the XC90's T8 version, which is the plug-in hybrid. It puts out 294 kilowatts of power, but carries a hefty price tag, over 76,000 euros. For that, it promises both sportiness and environmental friendliness. Now he's going to take a look. The T8 is the top-of-the-line XC90. With just two and a half liters of fuel per hundred kilometers, this beefy SUV puts out 294 kilowatts of power, but produces just 59 grams of CO2 per kilometer. A touch of class in the interior is the shift lever made of crystal glass. Design tester Tanju Gench sums up. 
The XC90 has evolved. The front is new, but the rear is typical for Volvo. He liked the design, but not the price. But at least he gets something good for the money. The SUV meets everyone's needs, looks good, and offers the safety features expected of Volvo. And what's Sasha Knapp's impression? He says the XC60 was the best-selling mid-range SUV in 2014, and this new XC90 met all his expectations. All in all, he thinks things are looking up for Volvo.